players looking for options. To deal serious damage per second in Genshin Impact will want to choose these characters. Hi guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we will talk about Genshin Impact, best DPS characters for each element, and how to use them. Best Pyro DPS, Hutaoryu Umiya. Pyro has always been regarded as one of the most powerful DPS elements in Genshin Impact due to its diverse character options. Pyro Resonance and extremely strong elemental reactions such as Vaporize and Melt. These factors make it a favorite among many players for DPS. Among the many options for Pyro DPS, including Limi, Diluc, which output seen in the game, to maximize her burst potential. She should be paired with characters like Mona and Sucrose and equipped with a four-piece Crimson, which a Flames and a Pyro Goblet artifact set. Her burst should be used when her HP is below 30%, as this will allow her to deal additional damage, and it also heals afterward. However, it is important to note that her elemental burst is only a portion of her playstyle, and relying solely on this single instance is not the most effective way to use her. Regarding Yoimiya, players did not initially find as much utility in her upon her release, especially when compared to Hu Tao, however, with the introduction of new support units. Her DPS potential has significantly increased. While Yoimiya has not shined in vaporized teams, due to her fast application, she has always excelled in overloaded, which has now become even more convenient, putting her on par with Hu Tao. To maximize Yoimiya's potential, players are recommended to focus primarily on her elemental skill and her normal attacks. It is essential for players to pay attention to Yoimiya's movement and location, as she is susceptible to taking too much damage with her low DEF modifiers. Therefore, having a shielder or a healer in her team is highly recommended. Best Cryo DPS Riot Edsley or Ganyu While Ayaka and Ganyu are considered top DPS characters. Among Cryo users, Riot Edsley has joined the roster as a prominent substitute for a Cryo DPS character. However, Considering that Ayaka and Ganyu are still commonly recognized as two of the best DPS characters. In the game overall, it is without a doubt not an indication that Ayaka has fallen out of favor. It is simply that Ryathesli is more versatile and easier to build compared to Ayaka, making him a better option for the best cryo character. Regardless, all three characters, Ryathesli might seem complicated at first to many players, as his playstyle, while straightforward in hindsight might require players to get used to his combo plays, without any constellations. Furthermore, Riot Thesley has the capability for a long uptime on the field. Therefore, it is recommended that players focus on support characters, with long off-field duration support skills to minimize the number of swaps required. Luckily, considering that he can work for both Reverse Melt, Perma Freeze, or even for Hyper Bloom as an off-field driver though not as recommended as others. He has access to many team members that can fit the bill. As for Ganyu, she is just as capable as Ayaka when it comes to dealing massive damage. She has been a fan favorite since her release. Although still a great choice for freeze composition, Ganyu really shines in melt compositions due to her slower charged attacks. His gives players more time to apply pyro with jangling, creating an effective team composition. Players looking to maximize Ganyu's potential should equip her with a full set of Wanderer's Troop and pair her with Jangling and Bennett for a powerful team that synergizes well. Best Electro DPS Raiden Shogun When it comes to Electro characters in Genshin Impact, choosing the best DPS character can be a tough decision, as both Ketching and Sinnoh are highly regarded for their DPS potential in the right team composition. Nevertheless, Raiden Shogun is the superior Electro DPS option due to her versatility. She functions differently from most DPS characters, often acting as a sub-DPS or burst DPS. Her elemental skill enables a range of reactions, such as Hyper Bloom, even when she is off-field, allowing for powerful elemental reactions to be triggered in team play. Raiden Shogun can be considered a formidable character. With her elemental burst, especially if players have invested in the four-piece emblem of Severed Fate Artifact set, as well as her constellations and signature weapon, Engulfing Lightning, to ensure the highest DMG potential with Raiden's Burst. 
it is recommended that players activate other team members' bursts first, which will build up Raiden Shogun's Chakra Desiderata and add to her elemental burst damage. Having higher burst energy cost characters in the team, such as Yimaiko and Shinkyu can be helpful to get the maximum amount of stacks. Furthermore, if this team also has a character like Nahida, Hyper Bloom Reaction can be activated quite effectively while still focusing on burst gameplay. Although Raiden has a long cooldown between her bursts, during this time, she can also attack as much as possible for additional electro damage, as well as to help her and other team members with energy regeneration. Before switching to other characters to restart the rotation, best Hydro DPS Tartaglia or Nuvilet. The majority of Hydro characters were considered to be support characters with a variety of strong off-field Hydro applications or healing abilities. The only other Hydro character released to act as a main DPS was Ayato, and more recently, Nilu has been added to the game, bringing a unique playstyle that has allowed Hydro to gain more popularity due to her bloom reactions, while Nilu plays differently. Tartaglia and Ayato have similar DPS outputs, as well as a similar combo and party composition styles. Therefore, if players have one of either character, they usually do not need to seek out the other unless they enjoy the character for reasons other than its DPS capabilities, however. It is still worth mentioning that, when applied correctly, Tartaglia's Riptide can surpass Ayato's DPS exponential. Tartaglia's playstyle is based on maximizing damage with Vaporize. To achieve this, he should be paired with Jangling who can apply Pyro to enemies with her Pyronado as well as a character such as Kazuha whose elemental burst is infused with Pyro. His bow damage is relatively weak, so many players opt to use his melee stance for more powerful attack damage. It is also possible to use him with a team composition that utilizes Hyper Bloom. On the other hand, Nuvilet plays and is built entirely different, thanks to his playstyle that focuses on the HP drain, gain mechanic, as well as charged attacks from a distance. Three of these orbs are required to be able to instantly charge his charged attack, meaning that players simply need to aim to them to heal him and activate this special charged attack. The remainder of the orbs stay on the field for quite a while, allowing him to perform this charged attack multiple times in succession without the need to swap between characters during the rotation. As such, it is recommended that players pick characters that have long off-field durations to ensure that Nuvilet is on the field for most of. As Dendro characters are relatively new in Genshin Impact. Undoubtedly, there are not many options for picking the best DPS characters amongst them. The first DPS character players have been introduced in this element was Tynery, which is overshadowed by Alhytham with the release of version 3. 4. Luckily, Dendro DPS characters already have good artifact options such as Deepwood Memories and Gilded Dreams, as well as the Spread Reaction, which is excellent to add to the strength of these characters. If they are paired up with an Electro Support character, Alhatham's combo rotation can be quite complex, compared to other characters in Genshin Impact due to the variety of ways. Chisel Mirror Lights can be utilized depending on a player's preferences. For instance, players can choose to start with Alhatham's Burst to benefit from three free mirrors then use normal attacks to trigger the mirror's damage instances and dendro reactions. After his burst consumes all the mirrors, Alhytham will need tense to get infusion back again and resume his burst-oriented playstyle. Overall, his dendro infusion playstyle will provide players with a more unique and engaging gameplay experience, as it offers an alternative to the abundance of burst DPS characters of different elements already available. Best Animo DPS Shao or Wanderer. Similar to Hydro, Animo has often been seen as a support focused element, primarily used for crowd control and to buff the team's damage output. This has been the main use of Animo for a long time, as Shao was the only DPS character until the release of Hyzo and Wanderer. Animo's only elemental reaction, Swirl, is not considered to be very strong in terms of its DPS potential, making Animo less appealing for DPS. However, with the release of the niche Animo support character Faruzin and new artifact sets for Shao and Wanderer, they can still be quite formidable and fun to play. 
Xiao is a unique character, who specializes in dealing high plunge damage. His abilities require a consistent healer to keep him alive. As his elemental burst drains a percentage of his HP in intervals, his elemental burst is the primary source of his DPS, as it allows him to jump into the air and plunge down, dealing massive damage. It is recommended he equips a 4-piece vermilion hereafter, or if not possible, any 2-piece attack plus 18% set and 2-piece viridescent venerer. For team composition, having Faruzan if her 6th constellation is unlocked alongside a battery character, and healers such as Jean is recommended. Zhongli also works great in a flexible spot. Wanderer plays significantly differently compared to Xiao. Unlike Xiao, Wanderer cannot plunge when he is in midair, but instead enters a wind favored state hovering state. During this state, his normal and charged attacks are changed to deal more animo damage. Since this hovering state is powered by a different system than stamina, charged attacks can be used indefinitely until the hovering state ends. Additionally, if Wanderer's elemental skill comes in contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, it will be able to absorb two elements at once and grant Scaramouch buff effects, based on the contact element. As for the best artifact set, 4-piece Desert Pavilion is suggested for its powerful animo bonuses. Lastly, players should be aware that Wanderer's burst should only be used when he is not in the hovering state, as it will end the hovering state. Best Geo DPS Arataki Ido and Navia. Often considered to be a defensive element, Geo is not only a strong element when it comes to the amount of DPS characters in the game, but also very beneficial in battles that require shield breaking, such as the Golden Wolf War. While Geo may not be as powerful as some other elements, in a multi element team composition, it is particularly strong when it comes to mono element team composition. It has some fun characters to consider as main DPS options, such as Ito or Ningguang. When using Ito, the main priority should be collecting as many superlative super strength stacks as possible. These can be obtained by using his normal attacks or elemental skill. Once a superlative super strength stack is gained, instead, her kit emphasizes crystallized reactions. If the Arataki gang stirs up any trouble, I'll drag every last one of them to back so. to apologize. Furthermore, Navia will need to collect the crystallized shards to obtain stacks for her elemental skills damage output, which is the primary source of her DPS. To ensure this is the case, players can utilize her elemental burst, infuse normal attacks after using her elemental skill, or simply hold and aim towards the crystallized shards before aiming it at the enemy to deal more damage. Characters like Farina, Bennett, and Albedo typically work well for her to have consistent elemental application for crystallized reactions, as well as to buff her stats. Best Physical DPS Eula Physical damage in Genshin Impact is a powerful option to consider when engaging enemies. It allows players to deal incredible amounts of damage without relying on elemental reactions. Physical damage can be increased by equipping weapons and artifacts with physical damage bonuses and by raising the character's attack stat. Furthermore, physical damage can still be further enhanced with superconduct reaction, allowing players to maximize their damage output. Typically, many characters are suitable for physical DPS role, except for catalyst users or characters that infuse their attacks with elements, although physical DPS characters may not be as popular as they once were. Eula is still a formidable character who can deal a massive amount of damage with her elemental burst, which is on par with many other characters. As a cryo user, she can easily activate superconduct with the help of an off-field electro user, such as Kuki Shinobu, Ye Maiko, or Fiskal. The team composition can be quite flexible depending on the needs of the fight. To get the most damage out of her elemental burst, however, Eula should use her elemental skill tap and then unleash the burst. After that, she'll have a 7 second window to do for normal attacks, another elemental skill hold, and another for normal attacks. All these will increase the damage of her delayed elemental burst until it pops off. Thank you guys for watching.